Good morning, good morning, good morning. Everyone stand to your feet and let's give God a praise. Welcome everyone. We, I want to welcome you to Calvary's Way Ministries. Welcome to our Facebook and YouTube partners. The mission of CWM is to make known the gospel of Jesus throughout the entire world and to teach the word of God to the end that those who believe may be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Here at CWM, we are committed to impacting lives on purpose. I am coming to you this morning with the scripture of 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. And it says, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power Power may rest on me. Again, I have read for you 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. May it add a blessing to the hearer and the doer of his word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you this morning. We honor you right now in the name of Jesus. We say, God, have your way like never before. We thank you, God, for waking us up another day, Lord God. Hallelujah, you didn't have to do it, God, but you did, Lord God. So for that, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory, God, for who you are. Thank you, God, for dying on the cross for our sins. Thank you, Lord God, hallelujah, for having us in the number, Lord God, that we are amongst the not amongst the dead, Lord God. So God, we lift you up right now. We give you praise. We give you honor right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Have your way right now. Have your way in us, through us, and around us, Lord God. We honor you on this morning. We praise your holy name for you are God and God alone. Hallelujah. We won't allow rocks to cry out in our presence. Hallelujah. But we will praise you like never before. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Have your way right now. We thank you, Lord God. Touch each and every person in the mighty name of Jesus. Touch each and every seat right now. Hallelujah. We're open and ready to receive. Hallelujah. Have your way. Have your way right now. Touch the musicians. Hallelujah. Touch the praise team. Touch us in the mighty way. Hallelujah, we thank you right now. Oh God, touch the man or the woman of God that we be bringing the word on this morning. We thank you right now. We magnify your holy name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there's peace, there's long suffering, there is grace right now. Now have your way right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. we come to serve an awesome God this morning. And before we get started, I just want to say, because God put it on my heart, in this flesh, it's hard. We have emotions, we have ups, and we have downs. But God was wrapped in this flesh, too. And in this flesh, this flesh is power. Because even God in this flesh shed a tear. But after he cried, and after he prayed, and after he sweated blood, he said, nonetheless, not my will, but yours be done. So we're going to do your will this morning. We're going to press on because we serve a great God, a great God that will never leave nor forsake us. He always has us in his hands. So we're going to lift you up, God, how great you are. Here we go, honey.
Lord. And I give you all the praise because you've been that good to me. You're deserving of everything I have. Everything you are, everything you've given me, Lord, I will praise you, Lord. Your praise will forever be, forever be, forever be on my lips, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord.
rescued your life, I need you to say that right now. Say you have rescued my life. You have 
I'm never going back. God, I'm never going back. I'm never going back. I'm yours. I'm yours. I'm yours. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. Oh. Oh yeah. See, this is the moment for you to open up your mouth and tell God something. This is the moment that you decree a thing and it shall be established. When the presence of God show up, it ain't time for you to be solid. Open up your mouth and manifest what you want God to do. Oh. Come on, we ain't doing church this morning. We doing kingdom. Whatsoever you bind on earth is already bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth is already loosed in heaven. Come on and do kingdom this morning. Open up your mouth and call the money in. Open up your mouth and call your healing in. Open up your mouth and call your children in. Open up your mouth! Yes, God! Yes, God! Yes, God! Yes, God, I'm looking for to show up any minute now. I'm looking for to show up any moment now. I opened my mouth in your presence, and you did exactly what I decreed. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. If you want to know if the power of God is real, I dare you to open up your mouth and tell him something. This ain't the season for asking, but this is the season to command the blessing to come upon me and overtake me. Come on. Come on, if you really believe, if you really believe he's rescued your life, you ought to tell him, you ought to give him some glory. You ought to give him glory. Open up your mouth and release a sound in the house. Oh,
I didn't come to play with God this morning. But I need an answer. I need an answer. I don't want you to go down but I need to obey God real quick because this is what God told me to have everybody do I need you to get out a small piece of paper or, or whatever you got to write on and I need you to write the one thing you want God to do for you I don't want you to fold it up I don't want you to hide it and I want you to just bring it and put it at the altar right here Come on, let's move quickly because I'm telling you, God said this is the day that he is answering what you decree. This is the day that God is manifesting your next miracle. Woo. Come on. That's it. That's it right there. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, we looking for manifestation. And this is the atmosphere. This is the atmosphere to get it in. Oh, Shanana Masiandoboshia. I feel God working as you walking. Come on, somebody. I feel God working as you're walking. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I feel God working as you're walking. Oh, shot another body on Oh, come on, come on. Come on, I need you to believe it because many of you, if not all of you, getting ready to testify. Oh, Shantana Labasi on this. That's right. Your manifestation is carried on the wings of your celebration. Come on and open up your mouth and praise God like he already done it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, Shantana Rabasiyande. Come on. I'm telling you.
come on. I'm going to give you something to get even, ex even more excited about. Today is the 4th of June. If anybody know anything about biblical numerology, the number four is the number of the supernatural. Does anybody in here believe that God getting ready to supernaturally answer your request today? Watch this. The second thing is we're in the sixth month. We're in the month of transition. But six is the number of man. So God said, I'm taking your man, your mankind, and I'm going to add it with the supernatural. Six plus four equals ten. Ten is the number of testimony. I wish I had somebody right here that would say, I am getting ready to testify of the goodness of God. Grab your Bibles while you're standing. We're going to go to the book of Isaiah. The 43rd chapter. It's a very familiar passage of scripture. And we're going to look at the 19th verse. while we're doing that in this moment I want to thank take time to honor and thank God for the angels of this house Bishop David Swenson and Pastor Sabrina Swenson Before I go any further, I just want to tell this testimony about the man of God. I was in a low place. Still functioning as if everything was going okay because you know how we do it. We become in the church great pretenders. And God can't never really come in and help us because we won't admit that we got a problem. But when we learn how to admit that I need help, God said I'm a very present help in the time of trouble. But you walking around acting like you ain't got no trouble and God ain't showing up because Oh,
so the man of God reached out to me and he said can you give me a call and I think I was doing something I said if you give me about seven minutes to get to the house I will he said no problem got on the telephone with the man of God and when I tell you he did not prophesy me out of that place but he pulled me out I wish I had somebody to say it ain't always a word that I need sometimes I need a hand to snatch I need a hand to snatch me out of my low place and that's what the Bible means when it says no greater love than this for a man to lay down his life in other words put aside what you think you got going on because busy is the kryptonite for the church these days everybody busy that you ain't got time to help your brother or sister everybody's so busy you ain't got time to take a telephone call but no greater love than this that a man will lay down his life for a friend he's not just my brother but he's my friend I know y'all want to say it's talking about Jesus, but it really ain't talking about Jesus. It said there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. So brother ain't the highest form of endearment that I could give him. But there is a friend Thank you for being my friend. This is why Calvary's way you cannot casually pray for your leader. Lord do it ain't going to get it this season. Lord help him ain't gonna do it in this season but you better tap into the realm of the spirit and find out what's really going and call whatever he needs because the Bible said he's sending help from the sanctuary but if everybody in the sanctuary is busy then help can't come It's a great burden your leaders carry. I tell the armor bearers all the time, this is a word for you. You ain't strong if all you could carry is his Bible. You ain't strong if all you could see is when he need a drink of water. But are you in tune enough with the man of God to see whenever he going through something and he ain't told you about it, but the Lord showed you. That's what a real armor bearer does. Because he was getting his water before he met you. He was carrying his own Bible before he met you. But that ain't what I come to talk about this morning. Grab your Bibles and let's go to Isaiah 43 and 19. I promise not to be before you long, but I'm going to give you what God gave me and I'm going to get on out your way. Amen. The word of God says, behold or look. I will. Not I want to. Not I might. 
but he said I will do a new thing in other words you will never go into your land of plenty if you are comfortable with your island of comfort. You cannot walk into the land of plenty if you are okay with an island of comfort. I like to go on cruises, but when I'm on the island, it's temporary and it costs me a lot. But the land of plenty, God said, the land will serve you. I ain't got nobody right there. So I would do a new thing. Not tomorrow. Not next week. Not three years from now. But now it shall spring forth shall ye not know it watch this if you don't know it there's still something about your flesh that's got to die because the spirit is revealing and then he said I would even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in your dry place this is unheard of but God said I'm getting ready to do it in your life so I didn't come to preach as much as I came to prophesy so please I didn't come with a sermon but I came with a word and God told me to give you the formula for this next season of your life you may be seated if you can because i'm just going to talk about what he's talking about the first ingredient of the formula is revival many of us have been sensing something in our spirit and it's been revival but watch this it is not for the local church but it's for the body of Christ that revival is getting ready to hit our spirits like never before there is about to be an awakening watch this and a renewal Woo! But God said your word for it for this season is release. Uh -huh. God said to tell my people that I'm giving you permission to be who he has called you to be before the foundation of the earth. Because in the past season of our life, we have been trying to play small to accommodate people and make them feel comfortable. not stepping into who we really are because everybody might not like it not getting the house and the cars that we desire because we don't want nobody to talk about us Woo. and so we didn't want people to feel uncomfortable with us so we decided to get what we didn't want because we didn't want people saying we were trying to be more than what we really are. But God said, I release you in this season to be who you are. Because one thing you got to learn is if the church folk don't stop living like they are in captivity, eventually there's going to be a turn. I learned something, Bishop. If you remember in the early 2000s when they shut down SeaWorld because the whale attacked the trainer. But what happened is whales are not meant to be in captivity. And what happened is they was putting those whales through something to eventually the whale said, okay, I'm tired of this. 
and the whale did not maliciously attack her. He didn't chew her up. There was blood. But what he did was he grabbed her by the ankle and drug her to the bottom of the tank. And there was two others. And what they did was they built a barricade. They started swimming around them so nobody could come in and help her. And what will happen if you continue to live your life in captivity, you will turn on the very person, a thing that was meant to help you. This is why leaders are going through so much hurt. We don't talk about that church hurt. It is because the people who are living in captivity because you refuse to be who God has called you to be. And now you need somebody to blame. And so you attack. So watch this, Pastor Sabrina. When God is calling you into worship, this is what he told me yesterday. He said, when I call you into worship, God is saying that he wants, when God is saying he wants to spend time with you, God doesn't necessarily call you to meet him. Hear this in the Holy Ghost. But ultimately, God is trying to introduce you to you. If the woman at the well would have never came in contact with Jesus, uh, the evangelist in her would have never came out. Uh, but the encounter with Jesus was not for her to get to know Jesus, but for her to get to know herself to say you are misusing your gift. Because you already know and have an idea what God could do and what he is capable of. But the real problem is, you don't know the power and authority that you possess. I wish I had somebody right there. You don't really know what's in you. Because the Bible says, now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think according to the power that work in you. Lay hands on your own belly and say, it's in me. It ain't going to get out. It ain't going to get done until it come up out of me. I don't care how much you say Jesus do it, but he said the power is in you. But this time God is going to give you the money to get the Mercedes. Watch this to get the Cadillac, to get the BMW, or whatever it is you want, and it won't even have to come out your pocket. This is the new thing that God wants to do, because the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. It's just laying there. But the problem is the just too sanctified to go where the wicked is. So it's time to quit playing small. And God said that he is going to release you. And the reason that God is going to release you is because people have been trying to hinder you and hold you back from what God has been trying to do in your life. Here is the problem. We surrounded ourselves around people who have tried to make us be what they want us to be. And we cannot fully step into who God has called us to be because we're trying to conform to the image that they have of us. So you don't prophesy because all they want you to do is preach. But the devil is a liar. If God called me to be a prophet to this nation, or to the nations I'm going to prophesy if I got to do it on Facebook live 
TikTok live if I got to call somebody on the telephone but I'm gonna get this up out of me because I refuse to die and not fulfill my purpose because the greatest sin ain't about you fornicating it ain't about you lying it ain't about you cheating but if you die and have not fulfilled your assignment you die in sin Because all sin means is to miss the mark. So God said I'm busting up systems. He said I'm busting up systems. I'm changing policy and procedure because you showed up. Come on somebody. Because there are certain places that you have to get. Is there anybody in here that says in the last season I didn't go because everybody told me I shouldn't. But this year, I'm taking the limits off God and I'm stretching out and soaring with the eagles and I'm going to stop acting like a chicken. Come on. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Because if the truth be told, People really just want you to stay where they met you. Come on. However, although seasons are for a period of time, they are not governed nor dictated by clocks and calendars. This is why you got to stop saying, well, May and June is my season. But when you are in the spirit, from January to December is your season. But watch this. But watch this right here. Watch this right here because I want y'all to get this. Seasons are changed and shifted by revelation and truth. Not by information. Because too many of you got too much information already. Because the watch this. I said this earlier. Adam and Eve ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, so you know how to do good outside of God. But when we get to a place where we say, you know what, God, I got to press into the place that you called me to because I no longer want knowledge, I want life. I don't want to come into the house of God and get a word that excites me. But I want a word that's going to cause me to live. A word that's going to cause me to change how I think. To change how I act. To change how I walk. To change my whole mindset to say, God, I'm going after you. I'm tired of all this other stuff, but now I got to go after God. I want a word that's going to make me want God. As a deer panteth after the water brooks, so does my soul thirst. So does my soul thirst after you. Seasons are changed and shifted by revelation too. So whenever God reveals to you a truth about yourself, Watch this. He has just shifted the paradigm of your life. God don't show you the ugly part about you just for you to say, oh, he's still working on me. But no, I got to do some work too. I got to do some work too because I don't care how much I could say, you know, because God done added a few members to this church called pounds they faithful members too they don't go nowhere but i can't just pray them off bishop there's some work that i got to do there's some, there's some work that i got to do if i'm tired of these members because they causing me to breathe hard If I'm tired of these members because I can't even go up a flight of stairs without needing an inhaler, then I got to do some work. So watch this. The other challenge for most of us is after certain words, we wonder why after the word everything goes crazy. It's because your life has to now adjust to accommodate 
the shift that truth has just caused. This is why you can't give up on God so easily. And this is what I don't understand about the church, Pastor Jordan, is you've been hearing word for seven years and one pandemic caused you to leave. I don't get it. What did you get that caused you to want to stay? What did you get that caused you to want to say, God, I'm going to trust you. But what we do oftentimes, Elder Natasha, is we wait till trouble come before we seek God. But what I want to know is what you going to do if another pandemic hit? Have you been preparing for war in the time of peace? Do you have strategy in place for your soul and spirit when the devil get ready to send an attack that's going to make you want to give up on God and give up on everything else? Uh, because I tell you this right here, even though I wanted to quit, I could not quit. Uh, because I was like Jeremiah, every time I thought about not preaching your word, every time I thought about not doing what you told me, it was like fire, set up in my bones. It's just because the truth about who you really are, Robert, will cause you to reevaluate some things. Watch this, and cause you to reevaluate some people. The tru truth about who you really are will cause you to put certain people in your life in their rightful place. Because we've been given people leading roles who should have only been supporting actors. And you got to get to the place to where you say, you know what, I'm sorry, it's my fault that I put you in a position that you wasn't ready for. You wasn't ready for the leading role. You should have been just an extra in this movie. But because I did not see clearly, I put you in a position and now the movie is behind schedule because I had the wrong people in the right place. So I had, to, I had to learn, Pastor Sabrina, there were some people that I put in a friend position who should have never been there in the first place. But one word of truth about who I really was and who I really am, it shifted the whole dynamic. I started seeing you for who you really are. I don't have to cut you off. All I got to do is make sure that you're in your rightful place. I don't care if you've been with the church 10 years. But when I look at your life, I realize you ain't got 10 years worth of growth. So when the person, new person comes in, they show the signs of growth. And I put them in a position, now you mad because you think loyalty overrides everything. But your loyalty can be a liability to the ministry. So you have to learn that people are responsible for their own feelings, not you. Because if you got mad, you chose to be mad. That was your choice. It wasn't mine. If you got offended, you chose to be offended. That was your choice, not mine. So why am I going to carry the weight of your feelings? Your feelings ain't real anyway. They here today, gone tomorrow. And you still holding on to something that really don't even exist. So the second part of the formula, I'm just about finished, is resurgence. It's a divine momentum that's getting ready to hit our lives. So I ask God why 
and Shekinah God said because you want us to get there I said because you want us to get there ahead of time and he said no I had to speed it up because the enemy has been trying to, to delay you with distractions because every word has a certain season of time and the enemy wants you to miss your window so God says I can't lie so whatever I told you has got to happen so when it looks like the window is about to close God said I'll put a wind oh shot behind your back uh, so you'll get there in the nick of time oh y'all ain't hearing me I need you to tell somebody you're not out of time but tell them time is working in your favor uh-huh go ahead on and tell them you gonna get what god says you were supposed to get and you're gonna get it in time because the wind of god is pushing me the wind of god is pushing you uh-huh that's what the holy ghost is the holy ghost is a wind The Holy Ghost is a wind. That's what it is. I know you didn't mean to be at the altar, but the wind, oh, Shatadaba, got behind you and pushed you. So this is why he says, if you believe in my prophet, you shall prosper. The word prosper just means to push or be pushed. So God says the moment you get the revelation of what he has said concerning you, he will send a wind that will push you with a force that won't allow you to stop or to turn back because many of you wanted to go back many of you wanted to backslide but the wind of God kept pushing you forward I there's a force behind me that I cannot fight so I got to keep moving forward that's why you all of a sudden have been trying to get things done and people are telling you to rest and to slow down and it ain't that they care about you but they trying to keep up with you uh-huh if you're moving too fast pastor because I want to move a little slower than what you're moving and what happens is at the speed God moves you he's moving me and if I don't cooperate with the shift then I will shipwreck and I wonder why everything going crazy in my life and it's only because I didn't come in agreement with what God was doing in your life so now I'm trying to play tug of war with the wind of God I'm trying to play tug of war with the wind of God and he said no come on I keep trying to elevate your leader but y'all keep jet lagging him y'all keep trying to drag him with the weight and hold him down but if all you gotta do is agree with the shift because if anybody ever studied the birds and the ducks when they fly they are flying in formation and they are not flying on their own strength but they are flying off of the wind of the ones that's in front of them I wish I had somebody right there to say I ain't even got no work in this season all I got to do is soar with what God is doing in your life all I got to do is soar I ain't even got to put no effort in this. But if you keep flying, I'm right behind you, Bishop. If you keep flying, I'm right behind you, Pastor. Oh, this is an effortless victory. I just keep walking into blessings. And I ain't even got to do nothing. Because I'm behind the wind that my pastor, my bishop is carrying. So I ain't got to keep flapping. All I got to do is soar. Oh. 
So this is why you will have certain people that will tell you to slow down. And child, if I was you, well, you ain't me. But there is something that I got to get done. And a resurgence has hit me. And I got to get it done now. Oh. This is why. Hush, just to give you a precursor. This is why the urgency of the glory carriers had to hit your leader. Because even though there was doubt and there was concern and maybe do you want to do this right now? But there was a resurgence that hit him and said, I got to do it now. I got to step out on it, whether the people get with me or not. But I tell you, Carrie's way, all you got to do is get behind the wind. Get behind the wind. Where you lead me, I'll follow. I ain't got to work hard in this season. So, you got to learn how to wear the grace that God has put on your life and wear it well. Uh -huh, because you're going to do more than most people did and you're going to do it in less time. Come on, somebody. The problem is you are not behind schedule. It's just that your brain ain't got the message yet. But if your mind will come in agreement with what God is trying to do in your life in this season, I can promise you uh, that you're going to look tomorrow and the money going to be in the account. Uh, you're going to look tomorrow and stumble upon the land. Uh, you're going to look tomorrow and stumble upon the building. Whatever it is that you got that God wants you to do, come in agreement. And so the last thing is, to the formula is, there's revival, there's resurgence, and now there's a revolution. Come on, y'all know, y'all used to listen to the same, Kurt. Do you want a revolution? So watch this. But you got to understand that the revolution is not an event. But revolution is a person. So God is getting ready to cause you to be the revolution. In other words, the person that you were when I met you, you will not be that person in the next seven years. I, I wish I had somebody right there. That's why God is placing people around you that see the God in you. That's why in this season of your life, you can't have everybody as a prayer partner. You can't have everybody as a pallbearer. I mean as an armor bearer. Because some people are praying on you and not for you. So you need people around you that can see the God in you. That can say, I'm willing to look beyond where you are. And see where God is trying to take you. Is there anybody in here that says God is getting ready to make me a revolution? Because when you become the revolution, watch this right here. When you become the revolution, Robert, you didn't come to take sides, but I came to take over. I wish I had somebody right there. If God puts you in a city, it means that he wants you to take the city. Which means that I'm going to carry such glory that the mayor is going to come to my church. Uh -huh. uh, the mayor ought to be a member of my church. The commissioner is going to be a member of my church. We ought to be running the city by way of Calvary. I wish I had somebody right there that says, you know what? I didn't come to Calvary to take side, but I came to take over because I'm about to be a revolution. So what you have to understand is that when God gets ready to change the season of our lives, he's not doing it, but by revelation truth. That when God reveals another side of you that you ain't never heard or seen before, he has just given your life permission to shift. I wish I had somebody that would yell shift. Come on, grab the hand of your neighbor and say shift. There is power in your tongue. 
Shift them up out of that place. Uh, shift them out of the seat of do nothing. Shift them out of the lack of danger attitude. Uh, shift them. Come on, somebody. Say shift. Come on. Come on. Come on. You got the desire. You got to want it uh, because your desire is what will drive you. Uh, your desire will deliver you to your destiny. What you desire, you will achieve. Shift. And as I close, I'm going to leave you with Numbers 11 and 23. And the Lord said unto Calvary, I know your Bible say Moses, but my notes say Calvary. And the Lord said unto Calvary's way, is the Lord's hand waxed short? Thou shalt see now whether my word shall come to pass unto thee or not. Because God said I'm getting ready to cause my word to come to pass in your life. Word brought you here. Word going to deliver you out. It's the word of God that abides forever. It's the word of God that abides forever. I'm done. But watch this right here. It ain't no names on these. But I'm telling you this right here getting ready to happen. Because there may be more than one of y'all in here. But what somebody wrote is they said, Lord, save my daughter. Daughter, come forth. Daughter, come out of the pits of hell. We command you. Uh, call you born now we call you in the spirit be saved I want about five sake to five folk to say and it is so and it's done watch they getting ready to testify they getting ready to testify. Mama, you gonna testify cause daughter coming out. Watch this. There's a name on this one, but I ain't going to read it because this is going to be for everybody up in here. But they said, bless me, Lord, to be a blessing to others. I wish I had somebody to say my tax bracket just changed. Come on, increase. Just hit my house. I'm getting ready to bless somebody else. To come out like I'm out. I'm getting ready to bless somebody else. To be able to get what they desire from the Lord. Give me five sanctified folk to say, and it is so. And it's done. I ain't going to go through all of them, don't worry. I'm just going to go as the Lord lead me.
come on I wanna they wrote this I didn't so we got to be specific because it says expand my family so I don't want you to end up pregnant So if you don't mean you want to be pregnant, I need you to go ahead and tell God right now, the realm of the spirit, God, that ain't what I meant. And it says restoration within the family. Oh, come on. The body of Christ can receive that one because we need restoration within the family because it's too much separation it's too much division but god is getting ready watch this right here god is getting ready to add uh, mature and grown folk to carry his way the family is getting ready to be expanded but god go honor your request come on say and it is so so this one right here says I like these right here because ain't nobody really asking nothing for themselves yet. But I know it's probably something in, and ain't nothing wrong with that. But I like these right here for the moment. Says, Pastor Brina, Lord, I want all my family to come into the saving power of Jesus Christ. Watch this. No early deaths. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. I wish I had somebody with enough Holy Ghost power to rebuke death. I rebuke death on my family. Ain't nobody dying until they say. I'm just going to do two more. I ask y'all not to fold these. And I'm going to tell you why, because you will understand if you study Jewish custom, if they ever gave an offering and it was folded, that means that it had a deficiency. That's why you don't, exactly, that's why you don't fold your money. I know they say it makes it easier to count, but there's really a spirit behind it. Because sometimes when you folding it and you balding it up, you ain't giving God your best and you don't want everybody to see that. But if the dollar is my best, I'm finna hold it up for the whole world to see because God gonna honor that. Because if he honor two pennies, he gonna honor my dollar. I wish I had somebody right there. So watch this. This one says, and I'm going to read it like this right here because I'm going to go ahead on and shut the devil down. I want my spouse and I to be debt free and to be a business owner. I just declared a thing and you ain't even get excited about it. If you know you wrote that, if ain't nobody else got with you, you should have told the church up. Because I told you what God, God said he getting ready to manifest what you brought to this altar. And this one right here says, and I just picked these random, restore my husband. To right standing.
come on that 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 could be any of us come on men if you are already a husband or you desire to be one you better go ahead on and praise god for this declaration right here because we all subject to get it wrong every now and then restoration and finances to be increased now I'm finna move out your way come on declare and it is so I'm only gonna take about five more minutes of your time. I know I done troubled you too long. But Evangelist Charlene, come here please. Lift up your hands. Cause God said today is your day. And God said to tell you, you have asked the hard thing. But he also says, is there anything too hard for God? So I don't know if it's a spiritual or a physical sickness. That's almost plaguing your life or somebody in your life. But God says, I'm healing that thing. God says, God says, I'm healing it now. Just place your hand right there. Come on, receive it, receive it, cause God said I'm doing it. Oh, shot. This is gonna be a generational blessing. This is a generational healing. It stops today. It stops right now. Oh, Shatanabasi on this. Oh, you believe in the power of God? Come on. You right here. Come on. God says that he is getting ready. Lift up your hands. Come on. And now is not the time to have a drawback. But God said that he's got to arrest you. Oh my God. And he's arresting some things that's going on in your life that's very chaotic. But God says today you're getting ready to experience his power. God said there's a surge that's getting ready to go through your very body that you're going to know that I am with you and I am about to visit your house. Oh! Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Don't fight it. You've been fighting long enough. You've been in a fight for a long time. 
even while you've been in the church but God said if you let him have it oh shot he said I'll call you to not have to fight so hard he said if you give it to me and surrender this time I'll cause you to not have to fight so hard he said cuz I'm fighting what's been fighting you oh uh-huh there's a deliverance there's a deliverance uh, the whole shine out of our fear there's a deliverance uh, there's a home oh yes god that's it right there that's it right there the power the power the power of god that's it that's it She surrender. She surrender. She surrender. Man of God right here. Yes, sir. You right here. Come here. Please. Yeah, you are one that God says restoration he's, he's bringing to you because I see come on lift up your hands it's just a sign of surrender because when I saw you I heard the Holy Ghost say you could tell me if I'm wrong the Holy Ghost said he has suffered a lot of loss there's things that just ain't been going quite right I see it almost as turmoil But God says today, he calls you out of it. And he says today, I restore unto you the years, oh my, that the palmer worm, oh shut up, that the canker worm, oh the caterpillar and the locust have eaten up. And I'm causing great restoration to come to your spirit first, and it's gonna manifest in your natural. He restoreth my soul. He restoreth my soul. He restoreth. Oh, my soul. My soul. My soul. My soul. He restored your soul, man. Oh God. Come on, daughter, right here. I heard the Lord say, you need to experience his love in a real kind of way. You know he loves you, right? But there's still some, I see some apprehensions because there's questions that you have because of what you've been going through. And I literally see the past three months that the enemy has been trying to take you in a whirlwind. Trying to make you quit and make you give up and you've been fighting with everything. You've been fighting for your dear life. And I even heard you say at one time, 
like Jacob. Lord, I'm going to hold on to you till you bless me. But sometimes I feel like letting go. But God said, you ain't got to hold on this season because he going to hold on to you. Oh, Maravacian de Devotia. So I want you to let my wife hug you and you finna experience the power of God. Oh, Satana. Come on, church, pray. Come on, cause we driving the devil out of her house. Uh. We driving the devil out of her bedroom. God, God, don't let her get up the same. A refreshing, a renewal, a restoration, a reviving of a soul. waiting back for a word from the doctor if that's you come yeah come on mother. cause whether it's a second touch but I'm just gonna tell you what I heard the Lord say Come on. Come on. Oh, no, 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 no. That ain't gonna plague you. That ain't gonna plague you. 
because God says you got a long life to live God says you got a long life to live oh you gonna see your grandbabies I hope my double see I that about said the devil ain't gonna plague your mind he ain't gonna plague your body but you hold my double see This is what I want you to do, woman of God. Come here. Yeah, yeah. Because you was one of the four, right? Was you one of the four? Are oh, you standing in the gap for your mama? So that explains why. The Lord says to tell you to release a sound. And even as you said, yeah. As you release that sound, God said it's going to reach your mama. That the next time you see her, she going to be in a better condition than what she was the last time you saw her. So come on and release it. Yes! Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. I'm driving it out. I'm driving it out. God said, I'm even restoring her mind. I'm even restoring her mind. Oh, my little boy, she on there. 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 Stay right there. Oh, shot. I know, I know, I want her to let her go. Oh, man, I know, I see a little bush here. Oh, shot. He shot at a little bush here. God said, when you release it, he will release it. When you release it, oh, Shantana Basia and the Roboshia. Yes, Jesus. Yes. Yes, Jesus. Oh, Shantana Basia. Oh, I feel power right in here. Oh, power, power. Oh, Satan, I'm Oh, there's power right at home. My other boshi and the other boshi and power, 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 power. Power, power, power. Oh! 
Yes, birth it out. Birth it out. Oh, shut up. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, my God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I hear the Lord say, I see the crowning. One final push. Oh, and it's here. Go ahead and give him praise in advance day. Yeah, yeah. Come on, both of y'all. This couple back here. And then I'm going to be done. Yeah, the couple. Come on. I feel a little turbulence in the realm of the spirit. Yeah, come on. But God says today, I'm getting ready to cause things to smooth out for you. It's been a great fight. A fight just to survive. Oh, Shantana Nabasia Nedoboshia. Oh, Mananabasia Nedoboshia. But, man of God, I hear the Lord say, I'm repositioning you. I got I'm um, first of all repositioning your heart for more of the things of me says God and then God says as I reposition him, it's going to take a lot of the weight off of you. Oh, shut up, do it, God. Do it, God. Yes, oh, shut up, do Oh, shut up, do Do it, God. Do it, God. Do it, God, in his spirit, in his soul. Go, Maranaboshia. Nothing lacking, nothing missing. It is finished, it is done. God said, I'm even fixing a job situation. Oh! 
I'll try to let this go but is there is there somebody in here that's actually waiting on a decision from a court system or something about a settlement if that's you come because God said today is a day of release And the first thing that the Spirit of the Lord wanted me to ask you, ask all of you, come on, I want y'all to line up right here so we can make it a little easier. He says, can I trust you with it? It said, because I can't have you wavering in your vocation. Because this release is going to change your life, but I can't have you squander it. And God said, if I could trust you to do what you said you was going to do with it, be it unto you, according to your faith. Oh yes, I see the shuffling of the paperwork, says God. I, I literally see in the realm of the spirit the shuffling of the paperwork because they are moving you to the top. What's been held up is now released, says God. What's been held up, oh, is now released, says God. Come on, what's been held up, oh, is now released, says God. Don't forget your vow. Oh, don't forget your vow. Don't forget your vow. Don't forget your vow. Because we'll change up on God when we get it. But God said, I'm sending a wind on your decision. And you getting ready to see the manifestation of it. Mm -hmm. There's a greater need than just a settlement for you. Because sometimes what we think is the problem really isn't the problem. And God said he going to get to the root of the matter for you. Because there's literally been some substantial hurts that you've experienced. I don't know, it's almost like a betrayal. It feels like it. And you didn't expect it, you didn't see it coming, it was almost like it blindsided you. And it caused some damage to the heart. I literally see the heart damage. But God said today he's going to restore your heart. God said I'm going to restore your heart. Because this situation changed you a little bit. And the loving person that you once were. 
you're not that person like you used to be because you got so many walls built up and you don't let people in easily no more and you're very watchful and careful of people but God says today he restores your heart and your soul can you lay your hands right there on her heart baby let him do it let him do it receive it receive it oh shut on and about see on it It's okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's maintain a posture of worship in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit, and in your soul. Truly, the Lord is in this place. Thank you, Lord. 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 As it is, as it is, our custom to celebrate the Lord's Supper on the first Sunday of each month. The Bible says that as often as you do this, do this in Remembrance of Jesus, what he's done for us. Well, 
how he was beat, chastised profusely. How he got up on the cross and shed his blood for the sin of the entire world. I have to put you in remind, remembrance of what Christ done that you may not only remember him and what he's done but the mistakes that I've made or we've made since. The Bible says that many fail to discern the magnitude and the gravity of what Christ did for us. So I just want you to take a few minutes, two few seconds, be, be, begin to per, repent of any sin and stain and iniquity, transgression, trespass, Sin seen, seen unseen, sins known, sins, sins not known, sins of omission, sins of commission, anything that you said or done that was not in the way of Christ. And Jesus. Pastor Jordan. Your grace. I'm sorry, I think. You know, come, come on inside. Face this way. Face this way. Y'all yeah, side by side. Okay. Come on. Bishop. Amen. Come on, elders. Hallelujah. You may. Tabernacle, the table. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. that Jesus was betrayed he met in the upper room with his disciples and he take the bread and he break it he says this is my body which is broken for you on Calvary's cross. Take, eat ye all of it, feed your wife. Your wife. Then he said, likewise the cup for this is my blood in the New Testament that is shed for you on Crabbe's cross. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. It says take and drink.
take drink, drink ye all of it. Everybody, if everybody on my right and my left will stand. Father, we've repented of our sins. We've acknowledged you again as our Lord and Savior. Father, we ask that you look on each and every heart and cause them to be in right standing with you that we may discern the Lord's body, your body, which is broken and your blood is shed for us. Bless the elements that we use to represent you. Bless you to bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. For this is my body and the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For this is the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You may face the people of God. At this time, we're going to turn everyone over into the hands of our sanctuary workers. In the back, everybody to my left, turn and face the wall to the outside. Everyone to the right, turn and face the wall to the outside. And they will direct you, direct you to come. This represents the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For this represents the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you.
And he took the bread, placed it in your right hand, lifted it up. He said that this is my body, which is broken for you on Crabbery's cross. Take. Eat ye all of it. And likewise, the cup, which represents the shed blood, shed blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, on Calvary's cross. He said, as often as you do this, you do show forth the Lord's remembrance. Take, drink ye all of it. The Bible says, if you don't mind, you can pass your cups down to the very end and someone will take care of them. The Bible says they sung a song. You can sing that. Hallelujah. He hung his head and said, It is finished, it is done. With victorious, we You may tabernacle the table. Hallelujah. I dare you to give God a crazy praise. I dare you to give God a crazy praise. I dare you. I dare you, I dare you to magnify. I dare you to glorify. I dare you to give God glory. That's it. That's it. Glory carriers, open your mouth. Glory carriers, give God glory. <laughs> they, they, they done messed up the devil done messed down and messed up y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying they done messed up and let two radicals out of their mind lunatic crazy for God link up y'all not nah, hear y'all didn't hear what I'm saying y'all not hearing what I'm saying they didn't messed around and messed up Lord have mercy somebody say shit can I help you the shift gonna be in your mouth 
Y'all didn't hear what I said? I said the shift is going to be in your mouth. See, see, you've been waiting for a shift to happen outside of you. But what you didn't know was that you was carrying the shift down in your belly. And it's just got to be released out of your mouth. Can I tell you something? You've been pregnant. You've been pregnant with your ship for, 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 for far too long. It's not going to come through this matrix. But it's going to come through that matrix. Y'all didn't hear what I said? They'll get it. They'll get it. After a while, every now and again, there has to be something, a sound, a shift that's released out of your mouth. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? You got to walk around. Walk around crazy if you got to. The glory of the Lord is upon me. Y'all didn't hear what I said. I will walk in great places. I will do exploits for the Lord. I gotta tell the world that I am caught. I am anointed. To show forth God's glory in this earth. You gotta tell people your sins be forgiven. You are healed. Your family restored. Y'all don't hear what I said. Your faith in God. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't mess around and tag me in. I'm going to let y'all go. <laughs> but do we one favor before you leave this building. One favor before you leave this building. Give God glory. Release it out of your mouth. Release it from in your belly. Release it from the inner kingdom of your soul. You are victorious. You are a winner. You are God's chosen. You are God's call. You are God's anointed. Walk in it. You are unstoppable. Nothing can hold you back. You are a royal priesthood. The earth moans and groans for the revelation of the sons of God to be revealed. The world is waiting on you to release God's glory upon their lives. Give him glory. That's it. It's not over. It's not over. You just seeing the tip of an iceberg. There's more for you than you can ever imagine. Ears have not heard. 
I have not seen the things that God has in store for you. Mother Rome, even in your season, even in your season of life that you are now, the Father told me to tell you that even greater days are ahead. He says, it's, in, it's not over yet. I'm going to make your ladder greater than your summer. God's going to make you laugh. God's going to make you dance. God is going to cease the hurt and the pain in the body. The sickness that has tried to overcome you. God said, you are here. You here, heal. <laughs> Bishop said, I didn't come to play with the devil. Lord have mercy. Can I tell you something? Get ready. Get ready for I want to call it an explosion of your faith. Your faith is about to, you're just going to start believing and don't even know why you believe it. Because I just believe God. Something is about to grip your heart. Something is about to grip your heart. About to grip your spirit. Where you thought you didn't have the kind of God-like faith. But I cannot tell you something. You are just about to believe. You are not just about, but going to believe God for the impossible. You're going to call him my oh God. God of the impossible. God of the impossible. God of the impossible. God of the impossible. I just believe my God can do the impossible. How many of y'all, how many of y'all have a what you feel like is an impossible situation that needs to be fixed? You done did everything you possibly can to try to fix this thing. I want to tell you, I want to tell you, every one of you that have your hands up, y'all don't hear me what I'm saying. You're next in line for a miracle. You're next in line. God have mercy. You better reach. 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 I'm stretching. I'm reaching as high as I can reach to meet God with my expectation. Meet God with my expectation. Touch him. Touch him with your faith. 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 Touch the impossible. Come on. Touch the impossible. Let the impossible be manifested. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. I dare you to open your mouth. I dare you to open your mouth. I dare you to open your mouth. I dare you to give him go with. I dare you, I dare you, I dare you, I dare you. I dare you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm on. I got a lot of more, but we're going to go. Do me a favor. We don't have any announcements, so we're going to forego. Amen. Wednesday night. Oh, I'm sorry. Facebook, YouTube, CWM partners that are spread out all over this globe. We pray that you heard a word today that it will encourage you to go on and see what the end is going to be. I want to tell you something that God is not finished with you yet. And we pray that you will f have not only heard but felt the tangible, a tangible anointing in the house of God on today. You are called. You are chosen. And you are anointed to spread forth the glory of God in this earth. We'll be back here on Wednesday night for Wednesday night power search. Then right back here next Sunday for our high praise and worship. Wednesday at 7, Sunday at 9. From myself, Bishop David A. Swenson Sr. and our pastor, Pastor Sabrina M. Swenson, and the entire Calvary's Way family. We want to say God bless you. Stay with God. And God will go with you. Impact lives on purpose. God bless you. We love you. See you here on Wednesday evening. Come on, family. Let's give our Facebook and YouTube viewers a good God bless you. Our giving platforms are on the screen. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Do me a favor while you're preparing your heart.